So the goal of this experiment is to take some previously generated DEC data, uh, do some filtering to that, and then use the results of that filtering um, to create a heat map by hierarchical clustering um, in some count data that you already have in your data set. This is going to take a couple extra steps um, depending on the data that you already have. So the first thing we're going to look at is our count data. Um, and you can see what I have for this experiment is six samples, uh, three stem cell samples, and three differentiated samples. Um, and I've already run DEC, which you can see down here, um, comparing the differentiated samples to the embryonic stem cell samples. So I have everything set up um, for this analysis. All right, so what we're going to do is the first thing we want to look at is um, taking out any of the low expressing genes. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our two summarized columns here, N2 and HESC. And this is essentially going to be the average of each of these columns. And the, the filter we're going to look for is that a, there's a value of at least 100 in one or the other columns. Um, and so the easiest way to do that is actually just to create an additional column in our DEC table. So we're just going to go to Tables, Columns, Add Columns, make sure we've selected our DEC test table, click OK. Then we'll do Column Summarization. We will select Max because we want that the Max to be at least uh, 100. Um, for in, in either of the columns. And then we're going to select our two columns here and then just click OK. And you can see what it's done is it's actually added in a max column. Um, so now we can use this for filtering. So essentially anything that has a count less than 100 gets thrown out. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is just use simple filtering here. So we'll go into our row, column, row tab, um, and we're going to say max greater than 100. And you can see that it's now brought us down to 2,200 columns. We're further going to look at only uh, genes that are significantly changing. So we can either use our raw p-value or an FDR p-value to do the filter. And we'll say less than 0 0.05. And so now we're down to 500 genes, which we can use for our heat map or for our cluster. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to add a list. So we're going to add a list of these 500 or so, 477 rows. We're going to say add item, and then we have to think about what we're trying to add. These are filtered, so these are visible rows. So we're going to add the list from visible rows. It's asking me how I want to add that. I want to add the gene IDs, and we're going to call this max 100 p-value less than 0 0.05 and 2 versus HESC. Click OK, and you can see we have now have a list in my uh, Solution Explorer. So now let's go back to our count table. Now one thing to, to note is we really don't want to uh, create a heat map or do any kind of clustering based on unlogged data. And our count data is, is unlogged. So what we want to do is then do a transformation. Um, and for some of you that have built-in pipelines, this transformation may already have been done. But the transformation is going to be done by going to the microarray menu, preprocess, transform. We're going to add a constant of 1 because these are counts. It's not going to really affect things much, but it'll help handle uh, the, all the zeros because you can't log a zero. And we're going to do a log2 transformation. And we're going to be careful to make sure we, we uh, name this and we'll name it tutorial data.count.log2. Um, if you don't rename it, it will overwrite your original data, and that's not what you want here. So again, make sure to add a constant to account for the, uh, the zeros, um, and then we're going to do a log2 transformation. And so now we have a log2 count data. Um, you'll notice that the design tables carried over, all the gene annotations carried over, and so forth. Now we're going to do some clustering. We're going to go to the microarray menu, pattern, hierarchical clustering. And we're going to choose to um, work on our, our, our log2 data. We'll make sure we're, we've selected that. Uh, we want to work on all observations or all samples. But we're only going to work on our list of variables. And these are our genes. So we're going to choose Customize Variables, click Select, 
we choose our list of 477. We want to cluster both the samples and the genes. Um, and if we have preferences for link and distance, we can change that. I'm going to leave that as the default here. Um, and then we're just going to click send to queue. Any changes that I've made since uh, the last time I've done this is going to, are going to be uploaded. So that's what we're seeing here. It's now in the queue. I'll click refresh a few times. You can see it's saving. I'm going to get an email. But then we also should see this update project button highlight up here. And what you'll see is in our lot two count data, as soon as this finishes downloading, we should see two new views. There's a classic dendrogram view and a dendrogram view. Each have different uses. We're going to use the classic dendrogram view right now. Uh, you can see our cluster. Um, one last change we think we're going to make. Um, right now we're showing the sample IDs, which to most people you don't know the difference between SRRs. 037199 and the rest of them. So what we're going to do is change our x-axis labels. So we're going to come here, change x-axis labels, um, and we're just going to use whatever column we wish. Some people have sample name columns. Um, I'm just going to use stage column to make it more clear. Um, and you can see our N2 samples are clearly differentiating from our uh, embryonic stem cell samples. I can also change the color. So for instance, if I wanted to make the middle color white to make things stand out a little more, I can do that. And remember, there's a zoom button up here, which will let me zoom in uh, in either direction. And I also have options to use color bars in either direction as well. I want to point out that there are other clustering options available, and the same technique can be used. So for instance, microarray, pattern, cluster just the samples or cluster just the variables. I can choose PAM, K-means, CAST, SOM. And remember that in all the cases, I'm going to set my variables to a customized set of variables. Um, for PAM and K-means, we have a, a module that will optimize the number of clusters um, based on what you're clustering, whether it's variables or, or samples. Um, or you can put the actual cluster number in here. Uh, so in this case, we'll just let it choose for us. Um, we can choose to perform this analysis on the server. No need to do here because we have 477 rows, not a big deal. We'll click Submit. And you can see in this case, it's going to create what we call a profile view. Um, and it's probably clustered uh, our genes into two, the ups and the downs, is my guess. That's what it looks like. Um, and again, you do have the ability to change the x-axis labels. So we could use something like stage or group instead of what, the sample IDs.